The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Paint No Use. <laughs> something that's most unusual, the sort of thing that doesn't happen often. Back in 1919, Jell-O received a fine letter of praise from Mrs. Ray T. Thorne of New York City. And now, 17 years later, we hear from Mrs. Thorne again. She's a real friend of Jell-O. Just listen to what she says. Some 17 years ago, I wrote to you telling how much our family enjoyed Jell-O and how Tommy, then seven, had rushed to the kitchen and scrawled Jell-O on the order list. I thought you might be interested to know that we still use only Jell-O and that the Tommy of my first letter is now a naval aviator, but still a Jell-O fan. While he was playing football in college, he came home from practice every day to raid the icebox. If he found no Jell-O, a whale of huge proportions went up. One night when I had the entire squad for dinner, Tom asked me to serve Jell-O, and the training coach heartily approved. So I want to thank you for giving me, during 30 years of housekeeping, a simple, wholesome, delightful gelatin dessert. No other compares with Jell-O. That's fine, Mrs. Thorne. Your letter means a lot to us. Many, many thanks for sending it. There aren't many products that can boast such loyalty as yours. And here's wishing you and your aviator son all the luck in the world. And now we bring to you the man who returned to the air last Sunday with a deluge of merriment, a gale of laughter, and a worried look, Jack Benny. Well, me worried. <laughs> well, hello again, folks. It's the Jack Benny who wasn't a bit more nervous last Sunday than he is right now. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Why, it was the first time that I ever saw you so jittery. An old trooper like you. Well, after all, Don, it was our opening program. Well, that was nothing to get excited about. You know, I wasn't nervous. No, not much. You were stagger stammering so much before you got through. Jell-O had 12 delicious flavors. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's twice as good as ever before. Yes, and twice as stammering <laughs> yes. for me there. Yes. Well, I can't argue with you there, but Don, seriously, did you, uh... Uh, did you hear any reports on last week's program? You know, any comments? Well, uh, no, Jack, but I happen to have a few clippings with me. Here's one from the San Francisco Examiner. Oh, the Examiner. Uh, let's see it. Hmm, Sunday Radio Reviews. A Manhattan merry-go-round, very good. Phil Baker, excellent. Eddie Cantor, great. Jack Benny, 8.30 to 9. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's quite a notice, isn't it? it all right. Not a rave, but at least it isn't a panning. <laughs> Any other glowing reports, Don? Oh, yes. Uh, here's one from a local paper, Jack. Read it. Hmm, with a big headline, no less. Well, uh, Jack Benny's first program goes over with a thud. <laughs> <laughs> you must have thought it was our thud program. It was our fuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else does it say, Jack? Oh, it says, all in all, Benny's humor showed the most complete display of brass that this critic ever heard. <laughs> brass, he must be talking about the band. I'll have to speak to Phil Harris about that. Did no? you call me, Jack? Uh, no, Phil, I was just talking to Don about our fuss program. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you heard any reports on it? Nothing to speak of. I see. <laughs> but say, Phil, I did hear some awfully nice things about you. Thanks, Jack. I hear some awfully things about you, too. <laughs> hey, read that right, will you? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I mean, I heard some awfully nice things about you. He's just a little excited, folks. But you know, Phil, you were a little nervous last week, too. You were shaking, so I don't see how you ever managed to lead your orchestra. Oh, it was easy, Jack. I just grabbed my baton real tight, uh -huh. and my nerves did the rest. Oh. <laughs> well, you deserve a lot of credit. Huh? Uh, come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Oh, thank you. Gee, this has been going on all day, folks. <laughs> oh, Don, now listen to this one. Uh, heard your program last Sunday night and can appreciate how you feel. Well, who's that from, Jack? Uh, the New York Giants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> it was nice of them to remember me. Uh, oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Gee, you look so tan and ragged. Mary, you, you did that joke last week. Well, you still look ragged. Oh. So you're starting out pretty good tonight, but at last Sunday you were plenty nervous. Who, me? Yes, you. Why, the script in your hand was shaking like a leaf. It was not. I was waving to my mother in the third row. Oh, your mother, huh? Well, your mother was in Plainfield, New Jersey. Oh, then I must have been nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mary, did you, uh... <laughs> Did you hear any, uh, we're laughing more than the audience tonight. <laughs> Mary, did you hear uh, any uh, comment on our show? No, Jack, but I got the loveliest telegram from a couple of sailors. Imagine. Sailors? Oh, Navy boys. Uh-huh. Huh? Listen to this. Heard you on Jack Benny's broadcast last Sunday night and thought you were wonderful. Signed, Seaman Seaman. Seaman? That's Simone. Simone. <laughs> Simone. Oh, they were seasick. Yeah, hmm. yeah. <laughs> Say, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Say, you're here alone tonight. Uh, where's your girl? Which one? Oh, you know, the one who wanted a lock of my hair last Sunday. Oh, the dopey one. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you want, Kenny? Oh, a wire just came through you. Here, I opened it by mistake. That's fine. What do you mean you opened it by mistake? He thought he could read. Oh. <laughs> well, give me that wire, Kenny, and after this, be careful. Gee, he's dumber than last year. He is not. I am, too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, hey, fellas. Get this wire. Oh, boy. Get this. It says, uh, felicitations on your debut last Sunday, repercussions of which are still reverberating. Cease. Your nonchalant and savoir-faire dominated the festivities throughout. Cease. Accept my sincere approbation. Who's that from, Jack? Freddie Bartholomew. Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> well, somebody likes to play, Bill. Sing, 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 played by Phil, Phil, Phil Harris and his orchestra. And very good. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Well, we went Simone one better there, I think. <laughs> but, Phil, I notice you're still a little nervous. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I invited two of my girlfriends up to see the broadcast. And they're sitting in the front row, and, well, naturally, I'm a little self-conscious. Oh, well, I know how you feel. You see, I had some girls up to the broadcast tonight myself. I invited Claudette Colbert, Joan Bennett, and Carol Lombard. Yes, I noticed those three vacant seats. Oh. <laughs> well, you know how heavy traffic is today. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last Sunday, this evening we are going to offer our condensed vest pocket edition of that famous classic, Anthony Adverse, written by Hervey Allen, produced by the Warner Brothers, directed by Mervyn Leroy... And shoes by I. Miller. Yeah, quiet. <laughs> Uh, we begin our play with Anthony at the age of 10. Since I'm just a boy at heart, I will play the part of Anthony the youth. 
Anthony. <laughs> also, the man as played by Frederick March. Mary Livingston will be Angela, my childhood sweetheart. Kenny Baker will be my servant when I get to Africa. Oh, Kenny. Yes, Jack. Uh, here's your accent. Yeah, the boss showing up. <laughs> Very good, Amos. <laughs> Owing to the unusual length of our play, we will start it immediately after the next number, which will be sung by Kenny Baker. And meanwhile, I'll try and get young for my part. <laughs> Gee, I hope you get Robert young. Why? <laughs> Sing, Kenny. Gee, I wonder where I put my romper. The night was filled with sweet surrender I had a million things to say We shared the moon in all its splendor You pressed your lips to mine And by the way I adore you, and I am living for you alone. Did I remember to say I'm lost without you, and just how mad about you I've grown? Kenny Baker singing Did I Remember from the motion picture Susie. And now for our play, Anthony Adverse. The locale is Leghorn, Italy, in the year 1773. The scene opens in the shipping firm of John Bonifeather, known as the Casa di Bonifeather. You see, in those days, everybody had a Casa. Are you going to have a Casa, Jack? Yes. <laughs> Jack Asa. <laughs> All right, let's get into the mood. <laughs> Italy, 1773. Anthony Advers. <laughs> Curtain. Lights. Music. <laughs> Cassidy Bonnyfeather? Yes, Mr. Bonnyfeather is in, but you can't talk to him. The telephone hasn't been invented yet, dope. <laughs> Call back in a hundred years. What's that? Oh, wait a minute. Come in. Hello. Hello, little boy. What you doing? I'm answering a telephone that hasn't been invented yet. Why? I don't know. I must be nuts. <laughs> what can I do for you, little boy? I'm looking for work. I'd like to get a job here. Sorry, we're not hiring any sopranos. <laughs> I'm not a soprano. I'm a poor little orphan. An orphan, eh? What's your name? Anthony. Oh, little orphan Anthony. <laughs> 
have you ever worked before? Oh, Arfanon. Woo! <laughs> Am I killing me? <laughs> oh, here comes Mr. Bonnyfeather. He's a nice old Scotchman, and you can talk to him. Oh, thank you. Ah, good morning, Les. Good morning, Letty. Good morning. Mor <laughs> Shut off that motor. <clears throat> Who are you, lady, and what brings you here? I'm Anthony, sir, ten years old and looking for work. Work? Yes, don't tell me that hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> well, you look like a bright lad. Anthony, what is your last name? I haven't any, sir. Well, lady, I'll get you a name. I and a job, too. I've got an eye. <laughs> I know I'll put you to work in the accounting department. Anthony, do you know arithmetic? Oh, sure, I can count up to ten. Up to 20 with my shoes off. <laughs> Very well, I'll try you out. First, in subtraction. Okie dokie. <laughs> now, Anthony, what is 2 from 12? 1. Mm. What is 3 from 12? 1. Mm -hmm. What is 4 from 12? 1. I'm stubborn, ain't I? <laughs> you certainly are. All right, what is two from three? Twelve. Ah. Oh, terrible. Well, I may subtract terrible, Mr. Bonnie Feather, but I add birth. <laughs> ah, adverse. That's it. That's what we'll call you. Anthony Adverse. Anthony Adverse. <coughs> Anthony Adverse. Now and forever. <laughs> Anthony, I see a great future in store for you. You will travel to strange places and see strange lands. Your life will be full of adventure. Gee, I can hardly wait. <laughs> London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, etc. Who is that? That's little Angela, the cook's daughter. Come here, my child. I want you to meet someone. This is Anthony. Hello, Angela. Hello. How old are you, Anthony? Ten. So am I. Gee, you're cute. And you've got the nicest gray hair. <laughs> Say, I got plenty of worries, believe me. <laughs> well, children, I have work to do, so just run around and play. See that, Mr. Bonnie Feather's awfully nice. He's a Scotchman, isn't he? If he isn't, he's wasting a lot of ours. Mm. And speaking of Scotchmen, you will find that Jell-O, too, is economical. With its six delicious flavors, <laughs> strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, <laughs> lemon, and lime. <laughs> I'm sorry, Wilson was invented. <laughs> oh, Angela, you're so beautiful and so sweet. <laughs> Will you marry me? Why, Anthony, we're only ten years old. Well, I'll fix that. Time marches on. Ten years later. Angela, will you marry me? Will you, Angela? Yes. <laughs> hmm. You ought to have your voice lifted. I'm... I'm sorry, I got a bad cold. But I'm all right now. Oh, then you will accept me, Angela. Yes. There I go again. <laughs> Angela, I'm so happy. Come, sweetheart, we'll be married at once. Anthony. Angela. <laughs> Ah, oh, Angela, at last you are mine, and we will never be separated. Never. Oh, Anthony, Anthony. What is it, Mr. Bonnyfeather? You must leave here immediately. I'm sending you on a special mission to Havana to collect some money that is owed to me. Havana? Aye, lad, you must contact Carlos Sibo, a wealthy Cuban. He's a slippery customer, but I want my money. What does he do? He runs a sugar plantation. Good. I'll try and get a lump sum. <laughs> Angela, be brave. I must leave you at once. All right. 
Ah, poor Angela. What will you do all the time I'm away? Oh, I'll get along. That's what I'm afraid of. Now, goodbye, darling. I'll see you in five or ten years. Goodbye, lover. Goodbye, Mr. Bonnyfeather. Goodbye, Anthony. Don't forget that lump sum. I won't. Will you miss me, Angela? Yes. Gee, I'll be lump sum. <laughs> well, goodbye, goodbye. I'm off to Cuba. Cuba, that's where he's going. Cuba, that's where he'll stay. Cuba, where wine is flowing. Anthony Adverse is now on his way to Cuba and will arrive there immediately after the next number. Play, Phil. years have elapsed and we find Anthony Adverse arriving in Cuba. His boat has just docked mid scenes of Cuban revelry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye, Mr. Adverse. <laughs> la cucaracha, la cucaracha, gangwe. I'm looking for Mr. Adverse. Ah, Mr. Adverse? Yes, are you Carlos Cibo, the Cuban? Am I a Cuban, he's asking. Welcome to Havana, my friend. Como esta, senor? Estoy me buena gracias, amigo mío. Ha, ha, ha. You said it. You know why I'm here? Sure. Mr. Bonifeather wrote me, so I want you to be my guest. Thank you. I want your stay in Cuba should be a pleasure. Don't be afraid to ask for anything. Everything I got is yours. What have you got? Nothing. <laughs> I see. Now listen, Carlos. You owe Mr. Bonnie Feather a lot of money, and I'm here to collect it. Take it easy, Anthony. Stay here with me. We'll go out and make boopy. Listen, I don't do that kind come of stuff. Come on, come on. Now, first you'll have to get some new clothes. New clothes? Why? I'm a tailor. <laughs> now listen, Carlos. Let's settle this debt right now so I can get back to my wife. Five down, Poopsie. <laughs> First, let's have something to eat. I prepared a special breakfast yesterday. Hmm, it must be cold by now. Don't worry, it's heading. <laughs> now, quit stalling. I can't go back to Mr. Bonnyfeather without that money. Well, money I ain't got. But if you would like to take a trip to Africa, I got there a piece of property that's a number one. It's a rubber plantation. Oh, so you're in the rubber business, eh? I thought you were a tailor. That's me, Robert Taylor. <laughs> And you say if I go to Africa, that plantation will belong to me? Take it, my friend. That's yours. All right, I'll go. Adios, Carlos. Adios. Who needs it? <laughs> I'm off to Africa. Africa, that's where he's going. Africa, that's where he'll stay. Africa, where my is going. Ten years later, and we find Anthony in darkest Africa, where he has become the owner of a rubber plantation in the jungle. He is plagued with fever, drunk with power, and mad with greed. Africa, Anthony Adverse. Stop that infernal noise. Come on, you slaves, get busy there. Cut that rubber, haul that barge, tote that bale. This heat is enough to drive you out of your senses. Hey, boss. Yeah, what do you want? Uba, guba, gluba, gluno, guno, zao. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you do something about it? I don't know what it means, that's why. <laughs> hmm. I want a drink. Where's my man Friday? Friday. What's that, boss? Are you my man Friday? No, sir, I'm your chocolate Sunday. Well, give me a drink. 
<laughs> I'm getting drunk with power. Oh, Mr. Adverse, why don't you give up this life and go back to your own people? Ain't you got no heart? No, I ain't got no heart. I ain't got no conscience. I ain't got no soul. Have you got a match? <laughs> This sun, this heat, this infernal jungle. Quiet! Quiet, quiet, you slave. Ouch, that whip is always getting caught in my leg. But I can take it. <laughs> What's the matter with the balls, man? He must be delirious. Better bring him some water. That's what I want. Water. Water. Uh, everything is going black. Uh, Look, he's fainted. Uh, uh, two from twelve is one. Three from twelve is one. Four from twelve is one. Gee, I'm still stubborn. Anthony Adverse. That's what we'll call him. Anthony Adverse. <sighs> Anthony, Anthony. Aha, welcome, my friend, to Havana. How did he get here? Oh, this jungle, this heat. I can't think. I can't eat. I can't sleep. You can't act either. <laughs> Angela, my wife. What are you doing here? Don't bother. It's just a dream. Oh, yeah? Wait a minute. What about that man in your arms? Is he a dream, too? Is he? Wow! <laughs> Angela! 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 I want to go home! I want to go back to Italy! Back to Angela, my wife! <laughs> 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 for the big news, the grand and glorious good news. Now you can make luscious homemade chocolate pudding more easily and more economically than ever before, and all because of Jell-O chocolate pudding. It's a brand new product and one you'll welcome with open arms. For Jell-O chocolate pudding gives you smoother, creamier puddings, more chocolatey and more delicious than any you've tasted since your grandmother used to make them. This is how you make yours. Just mix the contents of one package of Jell-O chocolate pudding with some milk in the top of your double boiler. Then let it cook until it becomes smooth and thick. After the mixture's cooled, serve it in sherbet glasses and watch the faces of your family light up the minute they taste it. Real old-fashioned chocolate pudding made with very little trouble and very little expense. Jell-O chocolate pudding sells for the same low price as Jell-O, and one package makes six servings. Ask your grocer for Jell-O chocolate pudding in the morning, and if he hasn't put it in stock yet, make sure he orders it for you. number of the second program in the new Jell-O series, and I hope you'll all be listening in next Sunday night when we offer our second episode of Anthony Advert. The part of John Bonnyfeather was played by Charles Irwin, and Carlos Cebo, the Cuban, was played by Pat C. Slick through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. Oh, Jack, Jack, don't you want to say something? <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston was a Red Network presentation of the NBC studios in Hollywood. The tune When I'm With You is from the score of the picture Poor Little Rich Girl. This is the National Broadcasting Company.